ready for takeoff. All right. Good afternoon. It's, it's been said that if you aren't in danger of missing your flight, you're getting to the airport too early. Some of you have probably elicited some feelings. Don't worry, this is not a talk about poor travel advice, but I do want to thank those of you who are catching a flight right after or stayed for this. Very much appreciate it. My name is Glenn Harmon, and I'm going to talk to you about the power of no. For those of you that have seen this before, uh, it's the same exact show as before, except with 8% more slides. Places you can find me, I'm on LinkedIn, Glenn Harmon Jr. I do movie reviews, you can find those on Letterboxd. I'm on Mastodon, barely. Uh, I'm still on the Bird app. Um, you can listen to me talk about basketball or movies or post divisive opinions like this. A little more about me, I'm a father, husband, cyclist, software developer, champion of tough conversations. If you need someone to tell you to get your stuff together, I'm your guy. I'm also the master of making others feel old. I personally feel old because my wife and I have two beautiful teenage daughters and they both can drive now, and so I like inflicting that on everybody else. By a show of hands, how many of you remember going to the, going to the theater to see The Lion King? This was released on June 24th, 1994. If you, are, if you remember this, you may already be feeling old. Don't worry, it's gonna get a lot worse from here. If we fast forward 25 years, almost to the date, most of us will remember the updated version of this coming out into pre-pandemic times, otherwise known as 2019. But if you take those same 25 years and go backwards, we land at the moon landing. Now that may not make you feel old within it by itself, but the issue here is, is that the original Lion King is now closer to the moon landing than it is to today. As you can see, I did wake up and choose violence. So you probably say yes to too many things. Have you ever been in a situation where you wish you could have said no and just didn't? Let's, if everybody could just put their hand up for a moment. Now I'm gonna have you put a finger down if you've ever attended a meeting that you wish you hadn't. Have you ever been happy that plans were canceled because you never really wanted to go in the first place? Do you have goals of reading or writing or picking up a new hobby that you just can't seem to find time for? Do you have trouble getting to sleep at night because you're either laying awake thinking about all the things you didn't do or all the things you uh, wish you had time to do? If any of those resonated for, uh, with you or you feel seen right now, it's okay, this is a safe spot. If you put no fingers down, this is probably not to talk for you. These days, the line between work and home become blurry at best and knowing how to say no is more important than ever. This talk is about using the, this two little letter word, no, to firmly establish boundaries and protect your time and values and the people you care about. This talk is gonna be broken up into the following sections. The power of no, the title. Why we can't say no. Why you have to get better at saying no. Evaluating whether or not you should say no. And finally, how to do it. When we were younger, we learned the word no, and we used it quite often. No, I don't want to eat that. No, I don't want to take a nap. No, I don't want to share. We may still be using that. Some of us have kids in here and probably know exactly what this feels like. Hell have no fury like a toddler who doesn't want to do something. But when do we give up the power of trying to establish our own boundaries? There are a few things I'm going to say today that may feel uncomfortable. 
the first of which is if you say yes all the time, your yes has no power. It doesn't mean very much. You ever have someone who is just going to assume you're going to do something? Like maybe give them a ride home from work or lend them a few dollars to cover lunch? Have a boss assume that you're going to pick up something at work or pick up the slack? Because they could count on you saying yes, it will eventually become an assumption and that leads to exploitation. Go for a second uncomfortable statement, but you cannot say yes to everything and then follow up and stand for something. We're in a room full of people that like to solve problems, so you may already be thinking of scenarios where that may not be true, but I'll stand by it. One of my favorite lines from Hamilton, the play, is that when Hamilton asked Burr, if you stand for nothing, what will you fall for? Those questions I asked at the beginning, have you ever attended a meeting you wish you hadn't? Have you ever been happy that plans were, were canceled because you, you never really wanted to go? Have goals of reading, writing, or picking up a new hobby that you can't seem to find time for? Have trouble getting to sleep at night because you can't get to the things you really want to get to? When you find yourselves in that situation, you have fallen into the trap of not protecting your time or yourself. From an article in Psychology Today, no is a moment of clear choice. It announces, however indirectly, something affirmative about you. Imagine declining to sign a petition. I'm not gonna sign this because that's not my truth. I've, in that moment, I have affirmed something about myself. Imagine if you say, I will not join your committee or help with your kids or review your project. You might say no to those because you are committed to some project of your own that's more important. Imagine saying, count me out, because you're not comfortable, not in agreement, or not on the bandwagon. Or even saying, no thank you, because it's just not something you want to do. No is both the tool and the barrier by which we establish and maintain the distinct perimeter of self. No says, this is who I am, this is what I value, this is what I will and will not do, and this is how I will choose to act. No allows us to recognize that we have limits. Those limits could be time, money, capacity, and in order to maintain those limits, we must become comfortable with no. This two-letter word can help you establish honest boundaries and allow you to take care of yourself. So we've talked a little bit about the power of no, and you might be thinking, as a natural follow-up question, well, why haven't we been able to say no? I would like to get this out of the way at the top. It's because it's hard. There'd be very little for me to say during our time together if it was easy. But maybe the better question is, is why is it hard? For starters, it feels negative. Whether it's a reasonable no, like, I'm sorry, I don't have money to lend you, or a thoughtful no, like, Yes, you do make really great apple pie, but maybe I'm trying to limit my sugar intake. Real conversation from Thanksgiving. Or formally asserted no. Thanks for the invite, but I already have plans for this weekend. The receiver only hears no, and we feel inclined to feel bad for giving that no. Another reason why we can't snow, or say no is we're concerned about the consequences. How do you say no to overtime or maybe a loved one without feeling like you're letting them down? Sometimes we struggle to say no because we don't have a deeper yes. To discover our deeper yes, we must discover why we were saying no in the first place. When, when you say no, it tends to be reactive, either out of a feeling attacked or accommodating or avoidance of that uncomfortable feeling. This type of no stems from fear, hurt, or anger. But if our no comes from someplace more proactive, forward-looking, and purposeful, it will give us the space to not feel like we're on the defense, and we'll often stop to think about what we really want and why. Lastly, we may suffer from fear of missing out, or FOMO, as the kids would call it. But are those reasons really worth your peace of mind? There is probably a nice overlap 
between those to put their finger down earlier when asked if they were ever happy that plans were canceled and those that never wanted to go in the first place. It is possible that you said yes just because you didn't want to miss out. Because saying no is hard, we will often attempt to avoid and accommodate, and this is how resentment grows. It's easy to get pulled into situations we'd rather avoid or not be in to begin with. If, it's easy, sorry. It's easy to get pulled into situations we'd rather avoid or to ignore our own well-being, but that never ends well. A little quick story about how this talk came to be. I was part of Toastmasters in the before times, the before times being the pandemic. Um, and they work on helping you improve your public speaking and presentations. At the end of one of the meetings, one of the leaders asked me if I would do a talk at the next meeting. I knew then when they asked me that that was not something I wanted to do, but I said yes anyways. These Toastmasters meetings happened every other Friday. So naturally, as one does, we fast forward to the next Friday, uh, the following Friday and I have no talk still. I'm getting ready in the shower in the morning and I'm thinking about all the reasons why I should have said no. And because I do my best thinking in the shower, that is where this talk came from. In the end, it worked out because I have a talk and I'm getting a chance to travel and give it, but there were a lot of stressful days and a lot of stressful hours leading up to that talk and even though I have this talk now, I had to suffer through those because I did not use no. I'm telling you this because I want to illustrate that saying no gives you power in a situation that you can go and do something else. Anybody, literally anybody can say yes. And those of you who put your fingers down earlier already know this, but no gives you the power in the exchange. There's a book called uh, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. The book is about a former FBI hostage negotiator and some of the techniques he used. One of them was about how in the beginning of a negotiation, he would lob up some very easy questions in which the offender would be able to say no to. It would help him establish some, help them establish some agency or power in the negotiation. They were easy no's, but allowed them to feel like they had power in this exchange. There's a whole other talk on the dynamic of power that we can take away from this, but using no allows us to keep the power in the conversation and protects our boundaries and allows us to protect ourselves. There are some benefits to saying no. Uh, we've kind of hinted around these already, but time to do whatever you've been putting off, power to be more in control of your life, the more you use it, it's the easier it's going to get. Uh, one that we may be suffering from, overextending ourselves. If we're using no regularly, we can keep from overextending ourselves and fighting fatigue and burnout for all the wrong reasons. And one of the better ones, you might discover something new that you like to do because you freed up time to have that availability. Saying no typically feels awkward and definitely takes practice. But again, the more you use it, the easier it's going to get. Now, we know there are times we should be saying no and some of the benefits of saying no, but how do we know when to say no? I have five situations that benefit from you using this power of no. Number one, ask yourself, does it align with your values? Say no when you want to keep true to your principles and values. Do I truly want to do this? What do I gain out of doing this task or attending this function? You'll notice a theme through some of these where it may feel selfish, but it is not. Number two, am I being exploited? What has this person done for me recently? That sounds terse, but some relationships are far, far more one-sided when you realize that you're always the one that says yes. As an aside, it is truly remarkable how much people will ask and sometimes even demand of you that they wouldn't ask of the, would you, that you wouldn't even ask of yourself. Say no when it keeps you focused on your own goals. Remember towards the beginning 
I asked the question about people wanting to read or write or pick up new hobbies that they couldn't find time for. Ask yourself, what else could I be doing with this time? Saying no to abuse by others. This is different than exploitation. Exploitation for the purposes of this talk is when the value you have to the other party is based solely on what you can do for them. Nothing more, nothing less. Abuse in this instance would be being treated poorly for fear of losing that person, continually taking that treatment and not saying no to that. And lastly, you can ask yourself, do I need to change course? So many of us would rather be right than happy. We made a choice that we should, and we should stick with it. Whether It doesn't matter what the results are, we made the choice, we're gonna stick with it. But what happens if you're on the wrong course and you're already aware of it? Maybe you, you work someplace that others might think is a dream job, but makes you sick to your stomach the night before. Maybe you're in a relationship or a friendship that you already know is over, but you're just hanging out there. Use the no to evaluate whether or not it's time to change course. Which brings us to how to say no. If only it was really that easy. We've talked about all the reasons you might not be saying no and how to evaluate when to say no, but we haven't really talked about perhaps the most helpful piece of info I can give you, and that's how to say no. Here are a couple of tips I'm going to give you for how to do that. Give yourself a cushion. Oftentimes, you're gonna be caught off guards, and getting good at saying no is, it's a new muscle. We're working on strengthening it. We wanna get better at it. So if you're feeling nervous or flustered, and you think a nice, squishy yes seems like the easiest way out, whip out one of these and see if this helps. I can't decide right now. Or, let me think about it. You could even say, uh, let me check my schedule and get back to you. Instead of expecting yourself to be the master of no right out of the gate, keep these phrases in your pocket and be ready to give yourself some time to pause so you can break the habit of agreeing to stuff immediately. We do this again often to escape the discomfort. Be quick about it. Tell the person you can't do it early and after the offer so you're not holding up their plans. There can be this feeling of guilt that sets in um, when you let an invite linger and you feel more compelled to say yes just because of how long it's been since the original invitation. Once you know that you're going to say no, say it. You'll feel better with it not hanging over your head. Be honest. Sometimes you have other commitments. You can use that. Sometimes it's not something you really want to do to begin with. That's okay, too. You can say things like, I appreciate the invite, but that's not something I want to do. That is a legitimate response. Sometimes there will be a need to compromise on whatever the ask is. But in order to have a successful compromise, you have to be honest for the reason why you couldn't do it to begin with, or didn't want to do it to begin with. Number four, suggest an alternative. If you're being asked to do something, maybe you can name another person that might be able to take your place. If you're being asked to go out to eat someplace, maybe that's not your type of restaurant, you can suggest another restaurant, another location, another, lo another activity, et cetera. This will feel very similar to coming up with a compromise, but if you're being honest with it up front, this step gets easier. Lastly, ask for a rain check. If it's something you really want to do, but maybe it doesn't fit in your schedule at the request of time, ask for a rain check. Make another plan for the future, and if, it's some, if showing a good faith effort is uh, something you're wishing to do there, making a rain check makes it super easy for you. In prepping for this talk, I read a book called Badass Habits by Jen Sincero, and there was an excerpt in it that was fun. It says, getting your no on is all about clarity, kindness, speed, consistency, and commitment. No is a simple, short word. It's not full of long, drawn-out explanations, justifications, 
apologies, emotions, excuses, and backpedaling. Here are some general rules to saying a really good no. Make it all about you. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you have a friend or family member that prefers to uh, make phone calls as their way of communication, but you have trouble getting that conversation to end once you get on the phone. One way that we might have felt compelled to respond before is, I don't want to be on the phone with you because you, I can't get you off the phone. That will prevent you from saying no because now you are afraid of hurting their feelings. But what if you made it about you? And you say, I've got a lot going on right now. Maybe I can schedule this like once a week. Or I can hop on the call for 30 minutes because I have X, Y, and Z I still have to do. You keep the emotion out of it. You don't try to second guess. And you don't have to spend time worrying about if they'll get upset because it's about you and what you need to do. In all of these examples, you are only responsible for your end of the conversation. And if they ever get upset, that's their work, not yours. Use direct language. Get straight to the point, such as, please call before you come over. Thanks so much for coming to my party, but I'm going to bed. You need to leave. I'm not comfortable hugging strangers, but it was nice to meet you. And as always, the classic no thanks. Powerful no type phrases often begin with, I need, I won't, I can't, I don't like, I'm not going to, and I would appreciate it if. One of the other things to evaluate is keeping the right people around you. Take the people you hang out with several times a week, month, et cetera, from there. And if you were to rank those interactions or what those relationships mean to you, spend more of your time with those that are eight and up. If somebody is a five to seven, Sure, by all means, hang out with them, but don't prior prioritize them over the eights. And if they're five or below, actively start practicing to say no to these interactions. They're likely more one-sided if you're rating them at five than you realized. There are eight types of no. There is no as a complete sentence. That's it, no, I don't wanna do it, no thank you. The vague but firm no, thank you for asking me, but it's not going to work for me. The referral, no. I won't be able to do this, but why don't you ask, insert name of your choice. The it's not personal, no. Thank you for thinking of me, but I'm not taking on anything new this quarter, or I'm focused on starting a new project, etc. There is the gracious, no. I'm so touched that you thought of me. I really appreciate your enthusiasm, but I'm not going to be able to help you out at this time. There's the now is not the right time, no. I would love to help you, but I am super busy. Can you come back and check, ask me again in a month? The reassess no. Let me think about it and I will get back to you. And then there's the, I'm actually too busy, but no, which is no, but here's what maybe I can do instead or offering up another suggestion. So if we're gonna put this into practice, there are a couple of questions I would have for you. Can you think of some scenarios in which you wish you could say no now? Are there ways to incorporate no with the holidays coming up? Are there other ways you said no that weren't included in today's talk? That brings us to the end, I'd like to Briefly thank my employer when they eventually see this video for sending me out here to tell you all the ways to say no. Um, and to ask if there's any other topics that you like to hear about, uh, if you would like to follow that link and make some suggestions, we come out, we do talks, we do blog posts over all sorts of things. Thank you for coming.